One of the biggest challenges for guitarists is taking their riffs and turning them into complete songs. It's not just about stacking riffs together, it's about creating structure, flow, and variety. That's where the magic of the transition comes in. To master the transition, let's dissect some of the heaviest bands in the game and how they do it. First type of transition we're going to look at, and we're going to see a lot here, is where you ring out the chords of a note and then you lead into a lead melody. Notice how Lorna Shaw uses ringing chords to create anticipation before a lead melody. As you can see, it's a very simple technique. You could have your main riff here that you're playing and you could either use a guitar ring out chord or any other chord here. For this part or for their song, they use the vocals to ring out here. So the actual riff here stops and then Will Ramos, his vocals go over the top of this and it leads into this transition break here where the lead melody starts to play. At the end breakdown here, they use the same transition, but instead of going into a lead melody, they have a droning guitar feedback effect that is being automated up and down in pitch. This is the note or the chord that's being rung out here, and it gives an unsettling and surreal atmosphere. It's a powerful technique to build tension and release and transition to next sections. Other examples that use this technique in Humanity's Last Breath song, Labyrinthian. This technique, once again, in that same song, at 2 minutes 48 in the song, they, instead of doing the guitars this time, they switch it up and do the vocals as the chord that's rung out. So a way to finish up that chord there to end it so obviously you don't have the chord ringing forever you can just let the chord ring out until you hit an impact on the drums and then that can cut the chord out and that can help transition you into the next section now the second transition that you can use to transition to next sections in songs is a silence pause and this can be very powerful can have a huge impact because you can just suck all the sound from all the instruments for just a brief second and then it has a big impact when all the instruments come in and it has a dramatic effect Take a listen to the start of the Architects song here, Royal Beggars. It's also a very powerful technique if you want to emphasize a big impact for a chorus. As you can hear by Spirit Box in Jaded here in that chorus, they have a brief moment of silence before they hit that last chorus. I've never found a way to be Another really good example of this technique is Suicide Silence Unanswered. They do it twice in this song. They do it at 22 seconds in the song and they also do it in a minute 30 and it gives that a big slam effect before it comes into like that heavy riff. As you can see with Suicide Silence Unanswered here, they've got that riff there. And they also use this as an opportunity for that silence to change the tempo. So going from 210 to 239. The next transition here is one you pretty much hear in almost every song. You'll probably hear it everywhere. It's really, really popular and it's very effective. It's when you let one instrument or two instruments play and everything else cuts out. For example, you might only have the vocals playing for that brief second before it transitions to the next bar or you might have just the guitar or the lead melody or a synth. And sometimes it's just a drum fill. It really could be any instrument or any sound or any backing track, but it just plays for a brief moment in time until it leads into the next part. Check out how North Lane drops to a single instrument, the lead melody before they hit a hard cut into the next section. In the song Quantum Flux. As you can see, they've got that main riff, which is the riff they would have started with and built upon and a transition into this um, end part of the song, which is kind of going to finish up and hit the climax of the song here. They hit that lead melody just for a brief moment in that bar there. And that helps lead us into a clean transition into the next section, which is with all these chords here, which is a new section that the listener hasn't heard yet. So it's a complete new experience to kind of end that climax of the song there. Another song that does this is The Summoning by Sleep Token. They do this in their song at a minute 28, where it's the vocals and the guitars that do this, where they cut out and it's only those two that play together. Before leading into that catchy breakdown that they have.
they bring the same transition back for later in the song at 321 in the song and for that same breakdown but only this time they use just the guitar the next transition is one of the simplest ones that you probably already used it's just the hard cut where you go straight from one bar to the next section and this is usually done just by cutting and pasting riffs together and usually just transition this by using the drums so the drums will kind of indicate as like a notification that you're going to be going into a new section so that's the only sort of transition that you do so it, all the music still playing together it's sort of the drums just have a little drum fill to actually guide the listener that you're kind of going into a next section a lot of the time this technique is used going from like a verse to a chorus not all the time there's other bands like spirit box that don't do that they do the other techniques to lead into their choruses you can use these transitions between any different section it doesn't really matter what the section is it's just what has the feel for that song and what feels right going into that next section listen to how these bands use this transition and they go into the chorus in north lane's quantum flux at 228 they use this to transition from the first breakdown into the chorus they just use that drum fill and that hard cut into the chorus and the summoning by sleep token at the very start their first chorus here at 54 seconds they just jump straight into the chorus a hard cut with just a drum fill moving from that first section Also, you can hear is at 344 in the song Shade Ashtray by Invent. They use this transition to transition to the very final chorus of the song. As you can see, they, as they play through the chord progression here, once they get to the very end of that section, they transition with that drum fill and hard cut to the final chorus. Now the fifth transition is called modulation or you could call it a key change or modal interchange. There's a few different music theory names and ways that it can go about it. But basically you're going from one key of the song, which a key of the song is just the notes that live within the scale of that song and you're changing it throughout that song. So it's not sticking to the one key. It could be for changing that one key or mode for a period of time during that riff, which I'll show an example of here in a minute with periphery, the event, or it could be a change in a whole section, which is another periphery song I'm gonna show here. They do this in the song, Scarlet. So each key and mode has a different feeling. So this is a great technique if you wanna change up that feeling or that sort of color palette of tones that you're using in that key. So you can see the song starts out in E Aeolian in the minor scale and it plays that throughout the whole sections here, throughout the intros, the verse, until we reach the bridge section. And as you can see here, once we reach the bridge, it changes the mode. So it's changing the key and it goes to F Lydian. Obviously the listener is not gonna know what music theory is or what's happening, but they're gonna feel that shift in the melodic movement there. And you can see they use that last chord there, that F, and that helps them transition into that next section there pretty seamlessly into that next mode, which is F Lydian. So they use that to kind of ride out and start off that next progression. This modulation technique is not as popular as the other transitions, but it's really cool and effective when it's used right. Another song that sort of shows this in the example where you can kind of seamlessly walk through the different keys and not be in one key, but kind of flirt with each key. So going between a one key and another key. And that's a song by Periphery called The Event. what's happening is you're hearing at the very start of the song you're hearing that reverbed note there it's either a synth or a guitar and it's on playing on that d note and that note doesn't change it goes over the different modes that it changes into so because it has a d it kind of makes me think that the start of the song is in d lydian and then it changes between d lydian and f major because f major does have that d note as well as part of the scale and as you can see here, there's a chord progression I've wrote on the screen here. So, so it starts off when the guitars and the bass and everything comes in and it follows this chord progression. So, so you can see there in the Lydian scale, it starts off on the three chord of the chord progression. Then it moves to a B minor, which would be the sixth chord of that scale. And then it plays it once again. Then it moves to the root note, which is the first chord of the chord progression, which would be D. And then that's where we get our first switch of the key change there 
can see it goes to the key F major, which changes us into a different key. And they use that to get into the F major key for a little bit of modal interchange for that one brief second. They play two notes here. So they play in that F major scale, it would be the F, which would be the one chord, and then it moves down to the five chord, which is C, which would give the chord progression a perfect cadence. That's gonna lead us back to Lydian D once again. And you can see this progression, it keeps going back and forth here as you go through it. And it sounds like this. So that's another technique where you could seamlessly change to a different chord progression, different riff, just by using a key change. The last transition one is a simple one as well. We heard it before when we heard Suicide Silence Unanswered, and that's a tempo change. And the tempo change left to last because you can use any of these other transitions to kind of use that as a sort of guide to get to the next. Some other tempo changes we heard earlier as well was in Lorna Shaw to the Hellfire at the very end of that breakdown. That was a tempo change as well until we get to that last nasty breakdown. The example we're going to look at here for those tempo changes is going to be from Humanity's Last Breath, their album Ash, and it has lots of songs. A lot of their songs from that album have tempo changes everywhere. Uh, one song we're going to use as an example here is going to be Blood Spilled. See, if we take a look at the music from Blood Spilled by Humanity's Last Breath here, they start off at 105, that tempo, and as they go through here, and you can see as they go from this one section, they're using the other transition effects here, they drop to 65, and then for a couple of bars there, and then they go down to 95 into the next bar, and then back to 65 here, and a lot of their songs, they do this throughout a lot of their music where they're just going back and forth between the different time signatures there, and they do it seamlessly. You don't really notice it, it's just an effect that you feel from the music. Heaps of other heavy bands use this technique for that tempo change and they combined all these different techniques from these transitions. So when you break it down, that's six ways to transition. And when you think about it, after you build upon your riff, you add your bass, your drums, guitar, and your other instruments, then all you're left there is to just transition and arrange it. So if you can get through that part there and the transitions and have an idea what transitions you have in your tool belt, this will give you a really good idea to use. So. You shouldn't get stuck and be out. You should be able to make songs in infinite amount of time if you really wanted to, because you could just use any of these techniques endlessly from key changes to the tempo changes to letting the lead melodies ring out, introducing new melodies. So you could pretty much write a song for an infinite amount of time. That's how you can kind of keep going and transition. And if you wanted to write an album, you can use these. So hopefully this video helped you out if you are new to this sort of stuff. This is just something after listening to a lot of songs and playing a lot of songs. I've noticed, so I wanted to share. So hopefully you found some value. If you did, like the video and subscribe to see some more videos like this. And I'll see you all in the next video.